Welcome, James, to episode 484 of Secrets of uh, Organ Playing Podcast. I'm very excited to, to, to be able to talk to you. And uh, I talked to you for another episode in the past about your, uh, you know, uh, 12 recitals over 12 months. That was a big... Uh, big adventure you you were sharing uh, at that time and i know many things have changed uh, since that time over a couple of years right so um can you tell us a little bit uh, more what uh, you're doing and uh, what is your current situation yes yeah, so after those 12 recitals i was pretty tired um so then the following year, I didn't sign myself up for that many recitals. And by that stage, the recital series picked up with interest and other performers wanted to play as well. So that took a lot of the, uh, the pressure off it. And um, I've always been a subscriber to your email list. And um, yeah, I liked reading all the podcasts. And I follow you on Facebook, all those social things. And for some reason, it was probably a period of about six months, I stopped seeing your posts on Facebook. I'm like, where have you gone? What's, what's happened? Um, anyway, for, during one week, I saw a post, uh, an email about your Secrets of Organ Playing competition. And I said, oh, that's interesting. But I, I, thought, I thought I'd see how it went for the first few weeks and see what the standard was like and whether it was... Um, doable and appropriate for me to to enter and i think it was week seven when i joined and ever since then i've i've been hooked and you've roped me into this social network blockchain called steam and i can't stop recording myself <laughs> and that's where i am today <laughs> Yeah, I should have introduced you more formally, probably. James Flores is our guest today, and uh, he, is, um, he is a man of many things now, not only an organist um, in Albury, uh, in Australia, uh, New South Wales, right? Um, Correct. Is, uh, is, your, is your province. Uh, but, uh, but also, he is also IT magician, as I can testify myself, and also... Uh, very interested uh, in all kinds of technological developments, new new technologies which uh, can revolutionize the world uh, potentially and um, make many good changes uh, for musicians, for example, right? Organists. Um, so uh, since since that last time uh, we've been chatting with James uh, over over. Um, uh, social media um, you know platform called steam and uh, i have i have this uh, opportunity to to do the secrets of organ playing co contest every week and james um, has been a constant uh, diligent and faithful participant every week week after week and recording um, even more than than it is required. Uh, he constantly puts up uh, a lot of his uh, other uh, posts and creative uh, um, ideas online, and also shares his other um, videos not required to the uh, to the contest itself. So I've I've um, I've seen his work over over this year and a half uh, so much on Steam, so that uh, he. He's become like a like a team member to me. Really, we we've been chatting every day about all kinds of things, about organ related things, about steam related things. So it's wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, James, uh, for being part of of this community. I'm really grateful to you. Thank you for um, taking me under your wing and introducing me to Steam. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's really a great place to share your work. You know, we, we have YouTube and Facebook, Instagram, but you know, what's, what's the value of a like? Um, it's just an ego boost, I think. Um, but other than that, how, how else can we find, we as musicians can find sort of some financial freedom. Um, it's very hard to, to make a living from YouTube. Um, yeah, I've certainly 
had a lot more engagement on Steam than any other social networking platform. And it's, um, it's a lot smaller than any other social networking platform too. And one of the things I like about it also, there's not as much negativity um, on Steam, whereas Facebook, you find a lot of trolls and same with Instagram. Well, exactly. Uh, they say reward the behavior you want to see in, in people, right? Uh, so they reward your positive activities, your your content sharing, your your ideas, your uploads. They reward. Uh, so people are compelled to be nice to each other, say positive things, even sometimes too much, right? Uh, in hopes of of easy returns, <laughs> and and and. <laughs> recognize those people when they say good job good post nice picture without even reading the post so those those people we know uh, quite well and can recognize uh, if if the person can uh, really uh, associate with our work and and have read deeply or not right as you said we could probably record a piece of music and halfway through just do something completely inappropriate and finish off with the piece so then you could you could be able to find out who actually watched it <laughs> yes that would be funny funny <laughs> and uh, i'm sure a number of people would would have watched <laughs> but a very small number right uh, yes so james um how do you like this contest that you're participating week after week secrets of organ playing contest no, it's, it's great. Um, it gives me a weekly goal and it's also building up a portfolio of music that I can refer to later on. Mm -hmm. um, sure, there's been some weeks where it's been difficult, um, but you don't have to present a major Bach prelude and fugue every single week. Um, or a trio sonata. Or a, tr or a trio sonata. <laughs> Even the slow movements doesn't have to be <laughs> the fast ones. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it's it's very very flexible and not you don't have to present repertoire. You can present hymns or improvisations, which I haven't got into yet. But um, we've had some entries that have been hymn playing, which is which is a bit different as well. So it's really flexible, and it's just a shame that there's only a few of us that that do it. It's it's quite a fun, fun exercise. You know, James, you said um, two things that that uh, it's it's a it's a very motivating way to practice when you record and you have a weekly goal, right? But the second thing was also intriguing that uh, that you build up a library of of your videos which you can later repurpose. For example, I know you have recently published your uh, your CD, right? And uh, these pieces have been partially, at least, um, inspired by by your activities on on Steam. Yes, correct. Um, mm -hmm. Some 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 of the actual recordings are on the actual CD. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to do it if I wasn't participating in the contests from week to week. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about your CD project. Uh, uh, what inspired you to uh, compile a CD collection and, and also what is in, in it, uh, what pieces have you recorded? Yes, so the CD, I really didn't actually plan the CD, mm -hmm. but um, my, my former teacher, who still comes to Aubrey every couple of weeks to teach at the church here, um, he said, oh, the, the anniversary of the organs is going to be this year, 25th anniversary. Uh, 25 years ago, the church burnt down and they lost the original organ. And then we got this um, little Torno organ put in in 1994. So he said, we should, well, you should do a CD um, to, to celebrate this 25 years. And I kept putting it off and, you know, I didn't, I didn't have the vision to complete such a big project. But then I thought to myself, hang on, I've got all these recordings and I can just add a few more and I can put the CD together and try and make it as balanced and uh, audience friendly as possible. Um, you know, it wouldn't be nice to have a full CD of 
quiet music, for example, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or a full CD of, you know, 21st century contemporary organ music. So I tried to put a, a, a good mix of um, different pieces. So you've got a bit of Bedard in there. Uh, uh, can, you introduce, can you introduce uh, Bedar? Because I think his music deserves recognition. Yes, so he is a French Canadian composer. Um, and his music is based in the French Romantic style. Um, and it's, they're very accessible pieces. Um, they're not overly difficult. Um, and I always joke to people because they always kind of mentioned to me that I play a lot of his music, that I'd be the first person in Australia to, to play his complete works. And that's been playing on my mind for, a, you know, for a few months, but he's still got a lot of music to, I've still got a lot of music to learn of his collection. Um, mm-hmm. It might, it might be his, a project for one day. What is his f- full name? Uh, Dennis or Dennis. Denny, Denny mm-hmm. Bedar. Denny Bedar, okay. What else are you playing in this CD? Uh, gosh, let me have a look. I can't remember. <laughs> Probably some Bach, uh, right? Yes, yeah, so I did a selection of the eight short preludes and fugues. Mm-hmm. That's in the middle of the CD. Uh-huh. Uh, I play three transcriptions. The Yes, You Joy of Man's Desiring. The the Adagio in G minor, that's wrongly attributed to Albinani, and Handel's aria from Concerto number 12. And at the end of the CD, there's a little Telemann piece, uh, De Monsieur Attende Domine, and I finish up with the Percy Fletcher Festival Toccata. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Excellent. Um, so, have you recorded those pieces uh, specifically for the CD, or you took the audio from from the videos that you recorded for the competition? Uh, the f- well, the the eight short preludes and fugues they were from the competition. Mm-hmm. Remember when I recorded one every week? I think I started off with a with one of them. Yeah. And you told me, oh well, that's the end of the eight short. You can go now. <laughs> And you, so I think you mentioned something about, oh, there's an entire Krebs collection of something else that I could play. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, most of these, I'd say 65% of the CD was from the competition. Uh-huh. And the rest was from just pieces that I've been preparing for future concerts. And I recorded them all in the same way. Mm-hmm. So, it's, um, so they well, all sound consistent. It's a, it's a very wise strategy, strategy, I think, to repurpose your work and, uh, you know, create another life for them in a CD collection, uh, in a CD se- section or setting. Because um, on, on, on YouTube videos, people are watching them online. But with CD, you could, um, uh, you could give gifts, right? The physical gifts to the members of your congregation, to, the, uh, to, to your fans overseas. You can sell the CD too. Uh, anything can be done uh, with, with this physical product now. And uh, it's good that you, you are doing uh, repurposing, I think. Hmm. It's like cross-posting on social media. Yeah, definitely. If you, if you write a blog post and you only uh, put it on your own blog, right? Uh, then only your own subscribers will see it. Probably maybe some people, a handful of people who come uh, from Google maybe uh, to your blog in the future. But if you cross post it to, to let's say Medium or Quora or, or uh, Facebook and Twitter and, um, and Steam, right? you get much, much larger audience and sometimes even um, like multiple streams of revenue because of new technologies. Right. Uh, so James, um, you tell me a little bit uh, now, what uh, challenges have you, uh, have you encountered uh, in the way of making the CD? What was difficult for you? Um, I, I mean, probably those those uh, 
um, uh, 35 percent of pieces that were specifically recorded for CD probably had to be set up microphone audio uh, equipment and then later editing is quite challenging for a uh, for a purpose like that yeah so I guess for the competition I had to um, record you know one one once every week um, but yeah, it wasn't effort you know having to put the recording device down in the nave and sync up the audio and video together so from that sense it was it was a big task but once i had them it wasn't too difficult to put in it i think it was harder to select what i wanted on the cd mm -hmm. um i think this is another post for steam you know just behind the scenes of how the cd is is created and uh yeah that would be very interesting uh, <laughs> uh, not only for steam but for for your uh, community elsewhere anywhere for 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 example for our community at secrets of organ playing uh, people would be delighted to know behind the scenes work that it took for you to produce mm. this cd and select mm. the pieces yeah and then i i was lucky to have my wife lisa to design the artwork you know that's another little project in itself mm -hmm. uh, it's probably a lot harder if you have to work with someone external but you know I'm one of those people who can just go to her and say I want this there and you know but I let I basically let her take the reins on on the design because I trust her her judgment in, we, in we have hands. We, we have to mention that uh, James's wife Lisa is is a fabulous desi graphic designer and illustrator so not only she produces graphic design for uh, or artwork for projects like that uh, for other people not only for james but uh, for companies i would presume uh, yes. corporate uh, work uh, but also she is an illustrator right and he, she recently has uh, been participating in our pinky and spiky content <laughs> very well and uh, yes. cartoons with her um, graphic tablet i presume and mm. uh, the really um, amazes me her creativity and the sense of humor and wit and even she was selected as a judge guest judge to ju uh, to to select the winners for the last week's um, con con pink and spiky contest so i really admire her creativity and uh, what she is coming up week after week uh, in terms of visual material too mm. excellent um, so please continue talking about the challenges. Uh, I know Lisa helped you with the design. What other, yes. what other works have, have been in, in the project itself? So I guess finding a company that would press the CDs, they do everything for you, like print out, print out the covers, the inlay, um, the actual design on the actual CD, and actually you know, burning the CD. Um, I'm certainly not going to do it myself, you know, to burn a thousand copies would take a very long amount of time. Um, yeah, so I, I'm all for outsourcing things, you know, mm -hmm. time, time is money, unfortunately. Um, time even, is more, I think. Yeah. even more, even yeah. more. They say time is money, but you see, you can earn money. You can earn mm. lost money. Uh, you can make up uh, your lost money, but you cannot make up time, which is no. lost. Right? Time is so, important. Um, my cousin recommended me a place in Sydney that does all these things because he's yeah. worked with them before. So I went on his recommendation, and yeah. The, and the other part was I I had all the audio files, but I have no experience in putting it onto a seed. Uh, you know, putting it into CD quality, CD appropriate quality. While it's fine to share what I have online for a CD, you want it to sound in a way that's suitable, you know, for playing in a car. You don't want to have to turn it up all the way and then the, and then the next track is too soft and you have to turn it up even further and the next track's too loud, turn it down. So mm -hmm. to, I'm not sure what the correct term is, but to normalize or, it, uh, master, uh, equalize or master the CD. Mm -hmm. I went on another recommendation from, from actually, from Thomas nineteen fifty eight. Yes, uh, he um, is a friend of ours on Steam. Um, he recommended a person that does that in Sydney, 
so I sent him all the files and um, I paid him to master the CD for me. And yeah, and I sent all those files over to the um, CD pressing company and that was pretty much it. It sounds so simple now when I'm talking about it, but at the time it was frustrating, you know, emailing back and forth and double checking everything's correct. Um, and there was actually one thing I did forget to put on the CD was the actual date. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so after all that, I still forgot to put a date, but you could still work out the date because I wrote something about the organ being placed or uh, being installed in 1994 and the CD celebrating 25 years. So you can work out the approximate or 2019 from, from that. But yeah, we're, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, I've seen your unboxing uh, post uh, when, when the CDs arrived to your ha home, right? Uh, by post. Uh, it was yeah. a really magical experience. Uh, I remember when I self-published my own CDs uh, with Kunaki self-publishing -ser self service. I, I also got uh, them sent to my house in small ba batches and I uh, unboxed them. It was really something. Uh, I put them on the table, you know, made a big <laughs> photo uh, we did a little celebration with osha we released yeah. three cds at once you know our duet uh, uh, collection and then um, two solo cds one for me or one for her and of course shared it on on social media so this kind of picture really took off and went a little bit of viral so yeah. have you shared your um, your um, unboxing post elsewhere elsewhere besides the um, yes i have on facebook mm -hmm. on facebook have you received uh, some engagement with with this post yes but not as much as i i thought it would be mm -hmm. i think um yeah it's it's not easy to to do it online i think for this physical product it's much easier to sell at the end of a recital or a service. Um, so I think, you know, when I give my next recital, um, I'll just bring some CDs along and I think it's, I think it's easier that, I think it's easier that way for this type of product. Exactly. When you play somewhere physically, you bring in this physical product, uh, CDs and uh, people, if they like, you're playing yeah. um, some, some of them, percentage of them will buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. If you need, if you need more engagement on on Facebook, I think posting a picture of of those CDs is more beneficial than posting a link to the article itself, because yeah. algorithm algorithms of Facebook now prefer native content, and of course native pictures. Uh, much more unless you are paying them for ads <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've done it in the past it doesn't work no no yeah well I people know. still see when I mean, you, you just think about how you react to an ad it's yeah you can yeah i'll save that for later but you don't go back to it anymore it's um yeah it's hard Yes, so I'm glad I ordered a, a few of those CDs. I'll be um, put. Um, I'll be. Uh, I think uh, receiving them this week because you sent me a notification that uh, it's already in in Vilnius, in a postal service somewhere. Yes. So I should uh, maybe go to church and uh, to my church and uh, see what happens. Maybe they already have received it, or uh, yes. maybe there is a message for me to go to the postal of office to pick up. But definitely, they they will serve as a great gift for um, for my friends and students. Uh, some of them you know, um, for example, uh, Diana Danilova, or uh, her nickname on. Uh, on Steam is uh, Drugalis, which in uh, in uh, English means butterfly. Uh, she is also a member of our Undamari studio at Vilnius University. So I think uh, I will give her a, a gift, uh, your CD, because she also is a very active participant in our contests. Uh, whenever mm. she is ready, because she she is really complete beginners. She started mm. last September. 
Um, like he's playing tri he's playing trios, which is quite quite difficult. Yes, we have to congratulate her advancement. Maybe uh, one of those days I I, I will uh, interview her about <laughs> about her act organ playing activities uh, on the podcast too. That and she's drawing for Pinky and Sparky as well. Yeah, she 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 has been really uh, an active. Uh, a member of the community, not only Pinky and Spiky, but also Active Reports. She's using a few of the apps that Steam Blockchain offers now. So I think she, she is quite uh, involved in the community. Yeah. Uh, I will give your CD to my friend and colleague Paulus Grigonis uh, because um, um, I think he knows you personally now through Facebook too and uh, and really uh, appreciates what what you what you are doing and uh, i will give uh, maybe i will keep one for myself of course <laughs> then I, I i i'll give one more to 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 some other organs that i know in town that would appreciate mm. wonderful uh, so we talked about things that you're working on um now that that actually cd is finished right and um, and you 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 are ready to to do your next project. Are you thinking about the future? What could that be for you? Yeah, it's kind of a good time at the moment because there's no pressure. There's no immediate pressures. You know, I've got I've got a couple of more recitals, but you know they're not too scary. I suppose it's just a matter of keeping the keeping the pieces on the boil. Um, yeah, I think a lot of my time has been taken up with Steam at the moment <laughs> mm -hmm. um, on, on the IT side. But also I, I do want to spend time um, with um, improvisation. I know that you've been trying to get me to, to start um, and I keep putting it off. So I'll, I really will make an effort uh, with what's left with this year to, to get started on improvising. You know, James, it's a very good thing that you mentioned uh, this uh, your improvisation um, dream, right? You, you want to uh, learn to improvise uh, like many people do. Mm -hmm. and uh, It's been my dream for a long time, even when I first contacted you. Really? Years ago. Years ago. I, I think I asked you about the courses. And, uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm still asking to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so, but of course, it's scary, right? And. Um, it's scary you now have the habit of recording yourself and putting your work out, uh, out there on YouTube. But there is one thing that is still scarier with improvisation because uh, with uh, repertoire playing, you're no longer a beginner. You're a quite uh, advanced organist. You can play a lot of difficult um, repertoire. But with improvisation, you will have to start someplace, right? And this yeah. place might not be what uh, you've been accustomed to hearing uh, other people play and yourself play, right? Your taste might be better than your skill at the beginning, right? With improvisation. Uh, so, uh, but I have a solution. You can still record. You can still record and put your work out there but not make it public, like uh, not make it video public for all YouTube to see, but uh, make it unlisted only for people who have the, the link for, to yeah. your video to see it. And very few people will only be able to see it, right? But put it on Steam instead of Facebook, let's say. Because uh, on Facebook, you have many organist friends and some of them might, uh, you know, I don't know, critique you too harshly or ridicule you for not being uh, latri virtuoso <laughs> uh, i know those people and they usually yeah. never never put themselves out there and never bother to <laughs> create, <laughs> only to critique don't pay attention to those critics anyway but um, you can protect yourself from that of course by making uh, your your work uh, and sharing it selectively on let's say on steam and you, you you've been uh, receiving good positive feedback on steam so you can anticipate uh, helpful feedback on steam anyway so, mm -hmm. and you can still motivate yourself to practice and record 
uh, having a deadline for also of some sort there is a new competition that a tribe uh, called uh, sonic groove uh, uh, announced recently sonic groove live so those kinds of um, videos could be perfect for that too mm. or for our secrets of organ playing too it, it doesn't really matter what you're playing you could as you say you could play hymns you could play the repertoire you can improvise you could even play a c major scale if you want as if, long as it's if that's your scene. thing as long as it's not on a synthesizer, it has to be on an organ. Yeah, we had uh, <laughs> we had uh, another participant uh, who is not an organist particip <laughs> participate uh, in this in this contest for a number of weeks, and and I finally decided to pull the plug and and say uh, it's for organists. You have to have a an instrument that is in some sort uh, <laughs> resembles the. <laughs> the pipe organ even it's uh, if it's electronic it should sound, sound like organ like pipe mm. organ right um yeah and so so yeah there is there are other of course contests that he could per, uh, participate in uh, besides yeah. secrets of organ playing Wonderful. So, James, uh, what are the, some of the things that are inspiring to you at the moment? Um, watching your improvisations. Oh, no, no, <laughs> not that thing again. <laughs> what is more inspiring to you, watching me improvise or improvising yourself? Uh, well, I need, I need ideas. And as you said, um, I just have too many ideas and none of them come out because there's just too many. And I think what you mentioned to me is just uh, limit yourself to four pictures, mm -hmm. but you can play them in any octave and any registration and see what I come up with. And I tried it a few times without recording, but I don't know. I think I don't have any structure, structure to it. I need to think about it more. You could, uh... You could you could actually have structure by selecting uh, four more uh, four more pitches for the middle section and then coming back to the pre previous A section, A B A form okay. like that very simple, and um, maybe one minute or or ninety seconds would be for each section and your piece could be anywhere from four to six minutes and it would be quite interesting i would say okay. if, the, if, if the picture if, if the notes would be contrasting enough but there's still a lot of choice with registration as well so you have you know four notes in the a section four notes in the b section but then you have a lot of choice with colors and sounds it's just that's overwhelming. Maybe I just have to limit myself to one registration. I see your your um, digital organ at the home with two manuals behind you, right? Uh, yeah. You have two manuals and pedals. So one one let's say one section could play on a lower manual, and the B section could play on the upper manual, and then come back to the lower manual, and you could choose a, a constant registration. Let's say principles for. Uh, section A, uh, reeds or flutes for section B. It, it's contrasting enough, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You don't that have to. You, you don't have to change the registration every four measures. But when I watch you, it's just a gradual crescendo. It's just amazing, and then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in those videos, I I, what I do is I I tell a story, musical story. Yes. And um and then of course. Anything works as long as it is interesting, but then I still need to think about the form and structure, and I have to come back to the previous ide ideas to 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 do recapitulations, to do some things that people could recognize uh, mm. in terms of of musical themes and in terms of registration too, and uh, perhaps textures, textures, let's say solo melody. 
trio texture, chordal texture, uh, what else, polyphonic texture, imitations if, if I want, canons work very well. Mm -hmm. uh, people could recognize those things. Oh, I heard this before, you know, and that gives them structure. Yeah, there's one actually, I watched a few of your videos. I think there was one on the Mixolydian mode or something. And mm -hmm. it actually, that, that was actually quite helpful. Um, very simple in improvisation. Uh, and there was another video you did where you were just playing a single note in the pedal and you kept repeating it like a, like a bird call yeah. and everything else on top there. That was, that was just, that was life changing. <laughs> just this constant yeah. ring in the background and you know, you're playing all these harmonies around it. What I did there is, is just simply selected a mode uh, octatonic mode uh, with half step whole step half step whole step half step whole step in 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 the pitches and uh, i played uh, parallel chords up and down very slowly uh, in i think four notes two notes in left hand two notes in the right hand and then i played some very high pitched C, I repeated C in the pedals. I would say, as I would say, flute four maybe in the upper upper range, uh, short staccato notes, right? Like like a like a, a heartbeat maybe, or um, something very constant, like a like a drop of water, drop of rain maybe, mm. could be what I was thinking at the moment. I can't recall, but uh, but um, you have to think about the imagery you, what you want to tell in terms of story right what kind of picture you want to paint mm. in musical means and that helps having um, a decent acoustical environment of course really helps too uh, if you're practicing at the home is just one thing right but when you transfer it to the big church with large acoustics cathedral maybe it's completely different feeling especially if it's instrument uh, unfamiliar to you and you have to adjust and uh, you have surprises uh, throwing at you all the time and you have to deal with them not panic not panicking yes when you make mistakes you you can use them to your advantage <laughs> you repeat them <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> repeat and develop them yeah yeah they have become turning points so wonderful james um, i'm so i'm so happy that uh, we met uh, those couple years ago when we talked about your 12 month recital series i don't suppose you want to repeat them anytime soon no <laughs> it's very stressful right it's um uh you know how we talk about crypto and you can't have yourself in invested in too many different cryptocurrencies you're spreading yourself out too thin mm -hmm. that's what i feel that it is if you're not if it's not your full-time job to be a concert organist it's yeah you're definitely spreading yourself out too thin so i'd rather focus on fewer performances but make them a lot more satisfying and a lot more memorable mm -hmm. But I'm glad you did that project because it gave you, yes. right? Yes. Uh, probably you've been, you would be a different organist uh, today if you haven't had that challenge. Yeah, it's definitely been a big um, motivational boost, and um, yeah, in, in terms of performing and not feeling, not being anxious about performing. I don't, I don't really get those feelings that overwhelm me anymore. It's just, it's just another performance for a different day. Mm -hmm. What will you be practicing tonight? I already did it before I talked mm -hmm. to you. <laughs> oh, I was practicing um, another Percy Fletcher piece called Fountain Reverie. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure if I'll record it for the contest or not. Um, yeah, well, uh, well, this this week's contest entry will be a surprise, and I think it will make you you laugh. <laughs> oh, I'm very anxious then. Oh, Maybe. it'll it will make you laugh so hard. <laughs> oh, great! Yes. Uh, 
uh, this week uh, uh, it's a free week you, you can you can put whatever you want right every week is um, basically up to you but we have this entry word that um, we use uh, as a way to and identifying uh, contestants that they are creating material specifically for that week not for two years before right not for mm -hmm. some other project but for our little, little contest and this yeah. week's uh, code name is uh, paint <laughs> <laughs> and you know why <clears throat> Because you're painting. <laughs> no, because, yes, yes, yes. Because I bought, <laughs> I bought some paint to to paint um, uh, the edge edges of the roof, um, and uh, originally it had to be brown, like like our cabin is, but I mistakenly bought a red one first. Then <laughs> Oshra got mad, and I went back to the hardware store, and. Uh, bought some lighter color i thought it was brown enough and it was salmon salmon uh, <laughs> <laughs> color so the third time uh, or actually it was the fourth time because the first time i actually forgot about paint at all and bought uh, bought something else like uh, um, like hedge trimmer uh, walking poles you know uh, trekker poles as they call it uh, 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 jumpsuit for working uh, <laughs> you know completely different things and then the last thing uh, was that osha went with me to the hardware store and uh, she selected the color color which was uh, chocolate chocolate color and it w worked perfectly quite perfectly and uh, I painted it and now now it, it's like original yeah without any uh, noticing so she has much better eye <laughs> even though I'm the the son of a painter artist <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's it's funny uh, you mentioned the, the contest where there, there was another contest on steam called the open mic competition yes they didn't have a word, but you had to announce the week number. But that still doesn't prevent you from recording multiple weeks in advance. Uh, you, know, you could say Steam at Open Mic Contest Week 141, and then in the same recording session, you could do the next week's one as well. Mm -hmm. Just sure. ch change your clothes or something. Um, whereas you know your competition is unique. You have to present the word every week, and you don't release the word until you know until the contest is finished so it's truly preparing a piece or, or not preparing it recording a piece in one mm -hmm. week and of course um it's limiting limited to video uh, recordings because with audio you can you know edit quite nicely so that yeah. you don't even know who is playing sometimes mm. Yeah, in in a sense, it's a little bit sad to me because uh, it limits the number of people who are more comfortable with audio. For example, they cannot participate. We have some organists like that. Uh, yeah. They don't have a camera, for example, or a decent cell phone to record. Um, they, but they they could uh, record an audio piece. But but I'm hesitant to change the requirements because then we would, might have some abuse. Yeah, I think I think so. Because uh, um, it's it, it involves monetary prizes, and we had some some abuse before, I think, too. Not necessarily in this contest, but in other situations on Steam. So, and I noticed that um, in the open mic competition, you know, they still say to state your name and week number. But when I watch some of the videos, people have been you know, say announcing the contest number, but then it cuts to a different scene and it's a different, uh, you know, recording. You don't know, it, it should be done in one take without any edits. Yeah. That's the true, you truly know. And it's I, valid I, entry. Sometimes when I record it for Steam Open My Contest, I recorded myself, for example, live on, um, on Facebook uh, using my cell phone. And you know the cell phone has two cameras, one front uh, camera and one rear camera. And uh, when I introducing my video, 
I'm talking into the camera and say, now I'm going to change the, the other camera to face yes, yeah. the keyboard. And at that point, I could really edit and cut and paste something really entirely different. But I don't, of course. But some other people could. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure if it's all allowed over there, but I did it. It looks like editing, of course, but it, it was yeah, done live. It's not, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was live. So excellent. Um, uh, now, of course, you have practiced. Uh, do you like uh, do you like sight reading, um, uh, James, uh, or do you prefer polishing a piece over and over again? Um, a bit of both. I mean, the last entry I I did, I had to learn that uh, piece that uh, Partitura yeah. um, uploaded. I had to learn that in a week. So. Um, yeah, I do like I do like sight reading. Mm -hmm. That's another you know, idea for a, co a contest is, you know, releasing a piece that no one's seen before or unlikely to have seen and play play it in one week. But that also you, limits the abilities of people, though. Um, that's right. Have you noticed, uh, James, that your sight reading abilities have improved because of this contest? Yes, because you have to learn it pretty quickly. quickly. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of benefits to participating in things like that. It's a really low pressure of event, right? You can skip a week or two if you are traveling. You can come back. You can be as diligent as James is uh, and uh, perform week after week. You can choose whatever uh, skill level you have, uh, not too difficult, not too overextending yourself. Uh, so I think even sight readable would work right um, but maybe then i will have a hard time judging because other people might present something more difficult and more in, um, engaging than than the, than easy piece right and then the prizes mm. might be dif uh, distributed uh, differently but still still it's very beneficial whatever level you are to mm. participate i would think Wonderful. Thank you so much, James. Uh, give my regards and Osher's regards to your family. I've been um, really following your, your wife's, Lisa's work very closely. And I'm so happy that she joined uh, our little community on Steam. And I hope uh, uh, to continue to communicate with you uh, over the coming weeks and months uh, even more uh, perhaps not more because we've been chatting every day <laughs> <laughs> every hour sometimes <laughs> so so i think we're doing okay on that level yeah. uh, on communication uh, but uh, but definitely guys who are listening to our conversation go check out uh, uh, james's website right can you tell our listeners where they can could find more of your work online and your cd of course um just go to steamit.com forward slash at contraboredom mm -hmm. you're still recommending uh, steamit not steam peak oh uh, wait or, or steam peak yeah steampeak.com forward slash at Contraboredom. Mm -hmm. uh, on Steam, there are about 400 uh, apps, uh, or different um, applications that you could use to post your content. And the first original was steamit.com. And everybody was so accustomed to the Steamit platform that that uh, even in, in branding perspective, it become, became the face of Steam for a long time. Yeah. But as uh, things uh, grew further, the community got involved and uh, made many more dApps. You could now post from, I don't know, dozens of different applications. And mm. the most robust now is Steampeak, steampeak.com, I think. And, and yes. you can find uh, James's work there. Uh, of course, you have uh, jamesflores.com too. Uh, jamesfloresorganist.com. Oh, James Flores organist. There is another James Flores in the world who, who yes. is speaking your... <laughs> and I can't... I'm trying to get that domain. <laughs> I see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like claiming account usernames on Steam. You gotta, you gotta be quick. Yeah, I know what it, what you mean. 
Um, excellent. So, guys, go check out James's uh, profile on Steam Peak or Steam or any other place that you want on, on the Steam blockchain. And also visit the jamesfloresorganist.com. There you will find a way to, uh, to uh, check out uh, his newest CD collection, right? What other things you have on your website at the moment? Um, there is uh, an outdated blog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, samples of my work, uh, recital schedule, um, yeah, it's just basically like a landing page for all the other social platforms, including uh -huh. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh-huh. Uh, do, you, do you update your blog uh, frequently? Uh, well, I did not long ago for my CD, but yeah, I, probably every two to three months there's a new post on there. Mm-hmm. But there's, yeah, there's more engagement on the social media platforms than a, than a blog. Uh -huh. How would it be very difficult for you to cross post your, your content, which is related to music and organ from Steam, let's say, to your own website? Actually, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be difficult. I'll just mm -hmm. use that share, share to Steam um, application. I would even... I would say as far because uh, you are a magician in IT technologies now you could even automate your cross posting easily right yeah I probably could do that but mm -hmm. that's another thing to add to my growing list of things to do on Steam <laughs> I had this idea of automating uh, some of the uh, organ relating posts from steam to my website too but but since i'm hosting it with weebly probably it's it, a bit it, limited I, yeah mm -hmm. it's different diff different thing uh, so yeah you you're hosting it yourself probably so you yeah. could you could uh, do all kinds of things yourself because you are a geek right <laughs> So are you. <laughs> well, it. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, well, I have some geeky um, knowledge, but uh, not near enough as you, right? Not nearly enough as you. So anyway, have a great evening, uh, James, in uh, in Albury. And um, are you playing uh, on Sunday in your church? Yes, I am. Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, practice hard, and and I will. And I hope your congregation will appreciate what you're doing. This and 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 applaud after the postlude. <laughs> They're all out the door by the postlude. Oh, issues. really? They don't. <laughs> they don't listen. No. Nope. Oh, we have to think about some of the ways you could keep catch their attention at the end. That would be great, but maybe that's for another conversation. No, no, not a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, and uh, wonderful meeting you face to face, chatting to about the things that we both love and enjoy. And um, I'll catch you online sooner than I <laughs> <laughs> sooner than I expect, probably. <laughs> okay, which will be in five seconds. <laughs> Right. All right, James, any closing uh, remarks for our listeners from Secrets of Organ Playing Community? Maybe some advice, some wisdom you could share? When you practice, miracles happen. Oh, I heard this <laughs> before. But, but you know, James, it's not complete, not entirely true. When you practice, miracles happen, but to some extent, you have to also share your your practice some some place share your work like you're doing right you're sharing share, it but share also get it in in the right places <laughs> 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 if you if you share it on facebook or youtube it, it it's not uh, not necessarily the case that miracles will happen not anymore yeah. <laughs> because they changed the algorithm but if you share it on steam then miracles might happen yes yes all right. Uh, so bye for now. And I'm really glad that uh, you're a part of this community. See ya. See you.